Hey, everybody, we are talking. I am so excited, first of all. Uh, I've been a longtime fan. Uh, I remember in Arkansas hearing, Lord, I believe, not knowing, knowing it was Reverend Milton Brunson and the Thompson Community Singers, but didn't know the voice <laughs> that was behind it and didn't have any idea that I would be talking to the maestro, song, right, Grammy Award winning, should I say, musician, songwriter, singer, composer, musical director, producer, visionary, CEO <laughs> of uh, label, uh, the record label Journey Music, uh, pastor of Grace Central Church. I mean, the amazing, talented, gifted, anointed, should we go on and on, Darius Brooks. How are you doing? Uh, Effie, God is God. And he keeps me good. Yes, sir. Hallelujah. <laughs> it is so good to be on here with you. You know you, my baby. Well, and you I know am. I love, I love me some you now. You know, I got to be careful what I say now. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> well, I tell you, we, we have been loving Darius Brooks a long time. Didn't even know who you were. Oh. I could have, oh. I mean, because again, I'm just, we just, me and my sister, Sandra, favorite song of all times, at least one of them, is Lord, I Believe. Because wow. again, that was the first, I'm like, who is that person singing? You know, again, I'm in Arkansas. I mean, it had to be what in the mid, early 80s, mid 80s? Oh yeah, 80s easy 80s. Yeah, easy yeah. 80s. But you know what's so funny? Because I love truth. I love the truth. What's mm -hmm. so funny, that is me singing that song. But you know who wrote that song? Who? It was Percy Beatty. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a lot of people believe that because I sang all of my music, uh, Rest for the Weary, uh, 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 yes. Lord, I believe uh, your will is what's best for me. Yes. Um, you I sing names, all of these all songs, stuff, yeah. and a lot of people think because I, I've written a lot, safe in his arms for the good of them, yes. that I literally wrote Lord, I believe. But that's one song that, you did that I write. sing that I did not write. Oh, okay. and, 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 and every time I do an interview on it, I always just make sure people are educated mm -hmm. about uh, 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 the song and the writer which is Percy Beatty. He's a great, great, great writer. And when we did that song, he was supposed to sing it or somebody else. And then he just said, I'll never forget. He says, Darius, I want, I wrote a song I want you to sing. And I said, no way, Percy. He said, yeah. And so when I wrote it, I, I related to it right away, I guess because I'm a writer and, mm -hmm. you know, I, I really, really never professed to be a singer ethic, <laughs> honestly, and I'm, it's from my heart, but I, apparently other people thought that wow. I sang okay. So he said, sing this song. And when I tell you, I related to it right away. It was life changing for me. Yeah. Well, that was the song that introduced your voice. Okay. To me, wow. and I'm probably sure a lot more people too. Yeah. Yeah. That yeah. Was, that, was the song. that was the song that introduced. Yeah. So thank God for Percy and thank God for you, but greatness begets greatness, you know? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. Well, and, and I got to add to this because I love information about music. Mm -hmm. Music is heard with the ear, but it's understood with the heart. They are some great writers that you know nothing about. Yes. But it also importantly takes a great messenger to bring about a writer's gift or message or composition not a criticism just an observation you can have a good song and if the messenger does not deliver it well it could kind of sort of be you know not so cool but you can also take a good singer which is where writers do they find good singers to sing their message and then they go go from there so it's hand in hand but more importantly the messenger is the one who really takes that thing to another place. I'm not talking about Darius Brooks. I'm talking about Patti LaBelle, Aretha Franklin, Whitney Houston, uh, 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 Thomas Whitfield, uh, Anita Baker, James Cleveland, uh, Albertina Walker, whoever takes a song and take that message to the next level, it enhanced the writer's message and creativity to make that message become alive. Because Effie, with every song, the most important things is not the music. It's the message and the messenger. Mm. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. I love it. Yeah, you so so I'm honored to have done that. 
Well, yeah. you brought that to life and so many more. I mean, and we're not going to even talk about your will and the songs you, um, I mean, that song really brought you to life even more on the world stage. But before then, let's go back yes. to Robert Golden <laughs> Bronson and the Tummies. Uh, yes. Feels good of them. I tried them and I know him. Uh, my mind's made listening. up. Shout. I didn't know you wrote God's Got It. I love yeah, that I wrote song. God's Got It. I, I didn't that. write Shout. Yeah, I didn't write shout. I wrote, okay. uh, you know, but there's too many when you when you really look at it. But if you really look at my disc discography with yeah. the Thompson community singers, Milton Bronson, mm -hmm. um, I, I if you look, I wrote almost each CD. I wrote half the CD. Okay, that's too and, many uh, songs. That's yeah, yeah. yeah. So if you look at it, and it's so funny because of course the, we'll talk about that. But the Tommy's reunion are back on the road. But we cannot do. We could do three concerts, three concerts, and not do the same song twice that's amazing yeah we could do a whole concert with just uh no leads over and over since he came my mind's made up available to you uh he's still good we could do a whole concert with no leads and then we can come and do a whole concert with just ballads and then we can come back and do a whole concert with up tempo songs the yes. legacy that or, or the blessing that god has given this particular group institution particularly we were a blessed organization i believe god put something in us that we can only be grateful for thankful for and not take the credit but give him all the glory mm -hmm. of i can honestly say a time in gospel history that i was simply a part of hallelujah can i that's just, it yeah yeah okay let's again go back you were a kid when you started with reverend milton bronson's tommy 21 yeah i mean so how did, did you ever envision, did you know that was going to be your destiny, being with? Well, my mother, the my mother knew James Cleveland and my mother knew Milton Bronson. Okay. So, uh, 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 yeah, so James Cleveland's story is another story when I first met him. I could not believe I met the James Cleveland uh, at Metropolitan Church in Chicago. But the way I got with Milton Bronson was my mom and him knew each other. You know, uh, I don't believe he knew that I was her son like this Darius Brooks. Mm -hmm. So once I, she he understood that uh, uh, it's going to rain uh, had hit mm. uh, 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 Marvin Winans and Vicky with the Tommies because that's the time it's going to rain is the year that the Thompson community singers really took off nationwide. Mm. Mm -hmm. uh, they were popular before on Madison Street. Everybody knew Milton Bronson. They were an incredible group then. But when they really began to operate nationally and to get that platform is when they did uh, uh, It's Gonna Rain, uh, There Is No Way, Jesus Is A Rock. Mm -hmm. And that's the CD that took the Thompson community singers, I believe, my opinion, my experience across that threshold nationally. And that's when we became known around the country. Yeah. I listened to and this from on that WDIA moment, yeah. in Memphis. WDIA in Memphis, we heard y'all. Because I, yeah. I was in Arkansas, but we had to listen to that station that played. Wow. Gospel. Yeah, so that's wow. And so when that happened, um, I, I, I believe I went to a rehearsal. Well, I had knew Percy had written for the Tommies. I knew those were Percy songs. Wait a minute, Effie. Because Percy and I was teaching Marshall High School these songs before they were recorded with the Tommies. Safe in his arms, it was a duet between my sister and this girl named Vicki Holland. No, Nancy White and Vicki Holland. They would tear this up in concert. People would be like, where's that song? And I took Safe in his arms and taught it to the Tommies. The rehearsal I taught it to, Beatrice Gardner, I'll never forget this in my life. Rehearsal was just rehearsal. And I started teaching Safe in his arms. Beatrice Gardner, uh, 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 sang it, and she just, uh, and, and, and even then, we were all so young, you are so right, this girl started singing that song, and I don't know if it was related to what she was dealing with or going through, but Effie, mm -hmm. safe in his arms, told that rehearsal down. It was done, and Reverend Brunson, I'll never forget him saying, boy, you got a hit on your hand, and I said, no, I don't have a hit on my hand. We have a hit on our hand. And to go back, so I believe that when I found out Percy was writing for the Tommies and me and Percy had been playing together and going from church to church before we even did that, I decided to one uh, rehearsal, just go check it out. And I went 
And uh, I went a couple of rehearsals. And then after that is when I believe, I believe I became a part of the group. I don't know how it happened literally that I started a, a plan, but I do remember one day Percy wasn't there and I just got on the piano and I was just in rehearsal. And I believe it was that moment that I started becoming a part of Milton Bronson and the Thompson New Singers. And from that moment on, I never stopped. I never looked back. I never missed, I missed out of my history of 35 years with Milton Bronson. I believe I probably missed two concerts, just two. One of them was, I, I was doing a workshop in Florida and the other one I didn't really miss. Actually, it was Maddie Moss Clark appreciation program when she had got her leg amputated in Detroit. Right. And what happened was something happened with the band where they didn't get in there. Milton Bronson called me and I flew from the workshop, had to give these people this money back to fly into Detroit to make sure that the Thompson Community Singers was on point when it comes to Mighty Moss Clark and her special right. service for her amputee leg. Right. So I, I, that's how I got started with him at 21. I was with him at 21 years old and I never wanted to be him. Mm -hmm. I wanted to follow and I often share with people, Effie, you, your mentor, you don't do what they do or say what they say. You watch how they operate okay. because your mentor is supposed to put something in you, not give you something. Mm. A legacy is not something you leave to someone. Effie, Effie, a legacy is something you leave in someone. Okay. And okay. so when I started understanding my place with Milton Brunson, a lot of people wanted, man, when I, I'm about to cry, a lot of people was giving me their opinion about what I should do. They were saying things like, you writing all those hits for him. Man, that y'all in concert and people want to hear Satan in his arms and my mind's made up. For, they ain't trying to hit no Milton Bronson. I had people tell me things like this. I had people tell me close, you a fool for giving him all your stuff. But Effie, I'm gonna tell you something and I hope this is blessing somebody around the country. Mm -hmm. God knows how to put you with the right people. Hear me, people of God, that you're supposed to be a part of their success and not be them. Right. And in due season, God has a plan for you. D-U-E, you're not supposed, Reverend Jackson taught me a long time ago, you don't go into Pharaoh's army on Pharaoh's chariot. <laughs> Oh, in other words, don't go into somebody else's institution trying to create your own. You're going to mess up God's design for you. When you have a mentor and when you under someone, you, the, the essential mystery, I don't care how smart you are or what you contribute, the essential magic is that you learn why, you, why are you there? Mm. And that's why I never left Milton Bronson, watch this, till he died. Your mentors... You don't leave them until they die. Once they die, that's when you start utilizing what you've learned from them. Elijah, Elisha. Yes, so. <laughs> yes. Yeah. You caught the so man. That's how I became a part of it. And yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I did a fast forward version, but that's that's the that's the true story. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That is he's a he's a great, he's a great man. He yeah. is great disciplinarian, and, and, and we're back together now, the Tommy's reunion, but every time we do a concert, I don't care what nobody say. I say, I need 30 seconds uh, to, to give reference and respect to this man who started this institution, because a lot of who you hear today, not a criticism, just an observation, ain't scared of nobody, and ain't hating on nobody, the Darius Brooks the Percy Beatty, the Kim McFarland, the Tina Watson Conley, the Leanne Faines, the yeah. Denise Battles, the Tommy Stewart's, the Jesse Dixon's. Mm. Uh, 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 I know I'm missing a lot of them. Uh, Dolores Power, It's Gonna Rain. These singers, Kim McFarland, these singers that you're hearing today, it's because of this man that we had an opportunity or a platform to do what we do. He was he was one of the conduits and resources that God used to get us to the place where we are. He was an incredible leader. He was a, an incredible disciplinarian. And I'm honored to have served under him and to become a part at the end of the day, how God designed this whole thing with him being a part of my journey. I am so honored. Man, 10 I... years straight, mm -hmm. hit after hit, 10 years 
straight. Effie, you know I'm telling the truth. I'm not bragging. We still playing the music, Darius. Straight. We still playing the music. It, 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 <laughs> I talked to a friend of mine in, in, in Memphis. You know the, the PD. She's the most beautiful uh, person uh, in the world. I can't think of her name. Um, oh, she's going to kill I, me because she's my heart. Um, it starts with a T. Um, yeah, uh, 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 um, it's right on the tip of my tongue. Mine too, but I know what you're talking about. I know what you're talking about. She, they're Depends number one them. right now. Tracy. Tracy. Tracy, Tracy, they're Vanessa. number one. If you do your research around the country right now, not a criticism, just an observation. I often teach Effie, when you criticize, you miss a lot. Mm -hmm. But when you observe, you get a lot. Your position is wild. I never looked at it like that. But they're number one right now because she says our format has not changed. The Thompson community singers are in heavy rotation, even in this 21st century right now and she says people know what they're hearing they know what's they like they know and and she said that's why they're number one right now not because of us but because of how god has designed substance to last he says i, I love the word he says don't remove the ancient landmark. Mm. And what he's saying is the foundation that got that got you where you are. Uh -huh. Don't you move amazing grace, how sweet the sound mm. that saved the rest like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found, was blind, but now uh -huh. I see. Don't you move, precious Lord, take my hand, lead me on. Because it's going to be a time in our lives and in our season that if we don't have something to hold us, Reverend Bronson used to call the music contemporary. It's a calm and it's temporary. You remember that? <laughs> yes, yes. Him and Albert Peter Walker, yes. <laughs> yes, and, but it's, not, again, not a criticism, just an observation because substance stuff lasts forever. Again, that's why we're still playing the music. We are yes. still playing. And I mean, wow. you still get chills. You still... You know, I mean, it just soothes your spirit. I mean, even now, isn't that amazing? <laughs> yes. No matter what, you can't tell them they will come, but don't to worry. Oh, it's going to work out. Woo! Woo! I'm sorry. I'm, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. Love the Lord. For the good of them who love the Lord. Okay, I'm sorry. I mean, no, that ain't a... I mean, if we don't need to go through that now, I mean, from what we've been through, I mean, of course, we know in life you're going to go through stuff. But in this last year of COVID, and we thought 2020 was it, but then 2021 came. Now, if people don't need to hear a message like that, honey, it's like, yeah, it's, now. It's revelant. Yeah, yes, yes. 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 And, the, and the verse says, the race isn't given to, to the, the script, no, to the song. But he, it, 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 there will be problems. And sometimes you might have to walk along. But things will work out. Watch this. And I teach this at Grace Central because we need to understand this. If things, they say things will work out for the good. Effie, that's not what God said. Mm. He says things will work out for the good of them. Mm. This is a certain group of people who love God's word and keep his word in its place that I know the pandemic is here, but God has a plan for me. Yeah. They also know that whoever have left this earth because of the pandemic was a part of God's plan. Mm. Mm. Because I often tell people some of God's greatest blessings aren't in what he gives. Some of God's greatest blessings are in what he takes away. Mm. And he says, unless a seed dies into the ground, it cannot bring forth fruit in this season. Let me bless it to you this way, honey. Sometimes we don't ever grow up until our parents are gone because our parents have a tendency of trying to hold on to us and control us. And God says, what are you doing? That's my call. You let them go. And so whatever's going on right now with the pandemic, I share this often. God is not good. Effie, God is God. Mm -hmm. And if we keep God good, he'll keep, if we keep God, God, he'll keep us good because Effie in Christ is a win-win situation. 
above ground, we trust his will. And when we die, we'll be with him eternally. Amen. So I'll cry until you tell me, let it go, let it be. Oh, Lord, your will is what's best for me. In other words, the way God got this, when I love him, I don't fight with his plan. My peace is letting God's way, because he's sovereign, do what it does without my control. And so that's the music we've sang down through the years. Um, he shall hide me safe in his arms. All of the songs we've sang down through the years is what we could relate to. 17 years, 17 months ago, this pandemic shut everything down. down. <laughs> everything, everybody, every small church, every mega church, every millionaire, every pauper, it shut everything down. down. And I always share with people, when God is changing things, Effie, I'm about to run. Mm. When God is changing things. It's not that a person or a place is good, bad, right, or wrong. When God starts changing things, it's simply time for things to change. Mm. And once we, and I'm gonna say that again, mm -hmm. when God starts changing things in our personal lives, in our lives, whether it's our career, our home, our job, our cars, our friends, our family, when God starts changing things, it's not that they're good, bad, right, or wrong. When God starts changing things, often it's just simply time for things to change, which means we can outgrow people. We can outgrow places. Wait a minute. And we can outgrow the place we're in as long as God is a part of our growth because he says the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. And I often share with people, Grace Central particularly, Effie, you got to get this. Mm -hmm. God loves all of us, but he treats us individually different based on how we individually love his word for our individual lives because how he got this thing planned all of us individually play a part of his big picture yes yes the peacock has a lot of beautiful colors but it wouldn't be beautiful for the little red dot and the big halfway purple dot and the triangle or the circle but it's beautiful because of how god has it designed so if we can understand this as individuals, and I was sharing with somebody uh, just today, this morning, I said, people, are, people, I was sharing with them and I was, I was telling him, I said, man, it's not, it, people are dying, but I was sharing with him, it's not the years in our lives. It's the life in our years. I love it. I love it. Effie, did you catch that? I got people it. People of God, it's not the years, it's not the years in our life, it's people that won't go to the next level and God give us chances and chances to just move beyond where we are. And we spend years not getting the promises of God because we won't understand that it's not the years in our life. It's the life in our years. We can die young if your life is fulfilled, people of God. Mm. Yeah, if, if God has given you, if you got everything God promised you, what else can you get? <laughs> I got it. <laughs> yeah, and listen, I don't compete. I don't compare. Sometimes, often, we look at people and want to be where they are and what they're doing. And God says, what are you doing? I got you where I want you. And I got another place for you that's crazy amazing. I can't tell you. Mm. But stay the course. And the journey should be as good as the destination, which means as we're doing little things and accomplishments, pay attention to who you're walking with, pay attention to your focus, pay attention that you are at peace with where you are, because once you are at peace with where you are, tomorrow is coming. You just ain't got to go through no changes to get to it. It's a, a songwriter in the secular world said, Epi, if it don't fit. Don't force it. Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> and, God, and God put it like this, be anxious for nothing. But in, so if you understand God's language, everything at the end of the day, Effie, makes sense. It does. It does. And I know that's the preacher in you talking. 
<laughs> We're going to talk about you being pastor of Grace Central Church in a minute, but I mean, I know that's like in everything you do. Yeah, yeah keep, me on, keep me on point, girl, because it's in me. <laughs> but I just love it. Yeah, you're right, because um, I guess with everything that the country, the world has gone through in the last almost two years, um, and then individually what people are going through, if you trust him, as you were saying, knowing that it's going to work out for my it's, good. It, but it, yeah, Effie, if it don't, we can be the first to call him a liar. Mm -mm, but we can't. We can't call it because he's not. Not only, not only can we not do that because he doesn't do that. He doesn't lie. So you have to be in his word to understand his language for you. Mm -hmm. I got to understand it for me. And that's the place that he promised peace. Because we'll know when to hold. We'll know when to fold. We'll know when to move. We'll know when to be still. Effie, perfect in Hebrew in God's language means simply excellence and order. Did wow. you hear what I said? Excellence and order. P-E-R-F-E-C-T. The world perfect means everything right which is why they say stuff like, ain't nobody perfect. Effie, that's not true. Mm -hmm. Watch this. God's definition of perfect is excellence and order. When the interview is absolutely gorgeous and awesome, that's perfect. Your response is, it was perfect. It was awesome. That's God's definition of perfect, excellence and order. So when you don't understand this dynamic of perfection, you use the world's definition of it and never accomplish nothing because there you are, it won't be perfect. Mm. But in Christ, he says, do all things decently and in order. And when you do it that way, that's when your response is perfect. Yes! That is hallelujah and hallelujah again. Yeah. So, okay, 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 okay. You got to leave me now. You know your brother. <laughs> all right. Uh, now, in terms of, uh, think about, again, your songs. As long as I'm safe in his arms, that's all that matters. Whether I'm here, there, or wherever. I am good. But let me tell you something about Your Will, which is a song I know that truly put Darius Brooks as the singer, you know what I'm saying, the solo singer. It took you to another level. But um, I, I have a friend who, I think her brother was going through rehab and the song he listens to every morning is Your Will. It's what's best for me. To this day, he listens. Wow. I'd love to meet him and things like that is so important to me. It reminds me of why I do what I do. Mm. Effie, our gifts are for other people. You're going to make me cry. I'm about to cry. We <laughs> tried it. This. Yeah. You know, I cried. I mean, when you go through stuff, there is, let me just say this. I mean, so many times I've said on the air or wherever, you know, you don't understand things. You don't know why it's like, God, but I'm, I'm trying to trust you. Help me. You know, Lord, just help me. But I'll often say with tears in my eyes, you know, and I know you say, I cried till you tell me, let it go. Let it be. It's like, okay, God, I understand with tears in my eyes, but help me to know and to, you know, just be in your will and know your will is what's best. So and, yeah, okay, and, I just wanted to say that. And you got to listen to the words because if you're not careful you'll think the song is saying let it go mm. it's not that it are the things that hurt us or the things we can't change or watch this trying to love someone and they won't love you back mm. yet let it go means trying to work something out and it's not working because it's got not god's plan for you it, it, it's trying to do things in our own power and it's just not working. So when I wrote it, I was sharing that I, I tried to do this. Effie, when I wrote Your Wheel, Safe in His Arms was written. My Minds Made Up was written. Effie, when I wrote Your Wheel, Through God's Eyes, which is where the Grammy is, when people say he didn't win a Grammy, Through God's Eyes is the album or the CD that Milton Bronson and Tommy's did. I produced it with, uh, uh, what's his name, out of Los Angeles. That's the CD that won the Grammy. My name is connected to that Grammy. Amen. So when they say Grammys, that's what I'm talking about. But when we understand God's will for our lives, it's the things that we have no control over or the things we wish was different. That's what I meant when I said, so I'll cry to you, tell me to let it go, let it be. When we're dealing with illnesses and when we're dealing with situations, watch this, that we have no control over. When I release it and say, God, your will is what's best for me, my peace comes over to me to say, now God is going to do it the way he has it planned. 
Amen. And that's the, and, and then when I wrote, your word is true and it will last. You will guide the future as you have, as you have the past. I'm going to bless you, Effie. There's some people who have done it. They want to do it again. Mm. And God says, no, you've had your turn. It's for someone else. Mm. And then it's for people who have not gotten a fulfillment of it. And he's going to give it to them. And sometimes he has to move some people out of some places in order to put them where his promise says they'll be. Mm. So when God's will is really understood, you ready for this? I'm ready. God's, God's will is not what he wants. God's will is what I want, but his way. Mm. I like it. I like God's it. will is not what he wants. If you understand that he has your best interest at heart, he just wants to give us what he wants to give us his way. So we won't do it the wrong way and wind up getting something that we regret or wish we hadn't got at least that way. A great name is rather to be chosen than great riches. Mm, I love it. I love it. I love it. You, you really, you, you have depth. I, and I, and I, and I, I can just even see the maturity, you know, since you, especially since you've been pastoring. And let me just say this real quick. Let me ask you this. It's amazing. Reverend Milton Bronson, who you work with closely for what, 35 years or so. Yes. Was a pastor. And well, I wouldn't, con I don't think I consider him as a singer. Would you say he was a real singer? Absolutely. And you know, okay, why I say that. Okay. Okay. You know, why I say that. Mm -hmm. Even though he sounded good, but he didn't sing yeah. a lot. I don't think. But, but the reason I say he was a singer is because world's language is different from God's language. Okay. Effie, a singer to some people is, we could do all of that stuff. That's not God's definition of a singer. Mm. A, God's definition of a singer is someone who takes a message and give it from the heart. Okay. So Effie, you can just sing, and I will always love you, I will always love you. Mm -hmm. And that's all you do. And it sell a million copies because all you trying to get people to understand is, I, well, whenever you're singing, you can only get a certain group of people who are not trying to hear a message. They're listening to runs and rage. Okay, okay. And they miss the message every hit. Mm -hmm. comes from someone who displays the message. It's never their voice. Hmm. That's Watch this. Whenever we hear a good song, who it is is second. The first is, oh my goodness, I love that song. That's because that person made sure the message is most important mm -hmm. than their voice or range. The second question is, who is that? I got to go get it. Yes. Yeah. So when people understand that dude, I am free, praise the Lord. Oh, I love that song. <laughs> Woo! So they're not concerned about him being a singer. They just want. Wait, okay. Okay, but I think we're freezing. You're free. Okay, now come. Okay. Somebody who shares it. And that message is received as a singer. You remember Thomas Dorsey? Oh, yeah. He said, All sang simple songs. They said it was a blues. I was watching Mahalia Jackson story the other day. And she was singing from her heart. And they misinterpreted as the blues. Mm. She's down in history now as the number one gospel artist ever lived. Wow. That's amazing. So... So understanding that you don't have to be a singer like the world say you are to sing. Music is heard with the ear, but it's understood with the heart. Mm. And that's why if you sang a song or a hit, I can write you a song just like this. As a matter of fact, this is one of the songs that's coming out on the Tommy's CD. I thought it was for the church. I thought it was for the sale.
I thought it was for the ones who love the Lord so dear. But then I began to understand his love. And that's when he made it all so clear to me. It's for all who come. All who come, his redeeming love's for all who come, all who come, all who come, his redeeming love's for all. Thought it was for the church. Yes. Yes. I love it. I and love I'm, it. I wasn't. I wasn't singing. I was sharing this message that God gave me. That I thought it was just for the church, and I thought it was for the saved. I thought it was for the ones who love the Lord so dear. But then I began to understand His love. And that's when he made it all to me so clear. It's for all who will come. His redeeming love is for all who will come. Let me wait. Some of us have been damaged by church stuff. Mm -hmm. And we got out of church because we were never in him. Mm. And so now we get older and life is hitting differently. And now we want him. And it's in that place that we get in him. And he said, all I asked you ever to do was love me. And so those that church has messed up, mm -hmm. that opportunity is still there in a real way to understand we can do this and finish this strong in him. Mm. And if we're will. here, huh? Said whosoever yeah. will, let him come. Let him come, yeah. And even if we've been burned and damaged, cannot throw in the baby with the backwater. We got to now, because some, some of us have been churched. I often say often, uh, Effie, the three institutions that have messed us up the most is the world's definition of church, home, and school. Mm -hmm. Those three institutions have really messed us up because church is now not a criticism, just an observation. It's ministries, people, names, people's ideas, people's opinions, not a criticism, just an observation. When you criticize, you miss a lot. When you observe, you get a lot. God specifically said, upon this rock, I'll build my church, which means it's only really one church. The other ones are organizations and institutions that have created what they believe is God, and it could be but God is clear on operating in my word and through my word is my definition of those who represent and lose compassion. We stay real clear. We understand to be patient. I know what you heard, but you can't get a doubt out of me. He says, these kind of people get through some of the roughest times. These kind of people get through pandemics, not a criticism, just an observation. These kind of people are subjected to the pandemics because in God's will, it's him being sovereign the way he wants to be God. Amen. We are talking to, I mean, Grammy Award winning singer, songwriter, composer, music director, choir director, producer. Okay, no, am I? Okay. I don't know who that is. Brooks. We're talking to Darius Brooks. <laughs> Are you, okay, uh, how is it on your end, Darius, in terms of, because um, it seems like I'm having a little technical, you're freezing a little bit, no? I no, I see you, you, and I hear you well. Okay, but for some reason, you, you for the last couple of minutes, tell me this, can we do this real quick? We're talking to Darius Brooks, everybody. I mean, who's written, I mean, folk ain't even talked about the fact that you worked with, again, Vicki Wine and Snoop Dogg, Aretha Franklin, Ramsey Lewis, uh, Shirley Caesar, in addition to, you know, uh, Reverend Milton Brunson, the Tommies, and in addition to your own solo career. But Darius, can we do a favor? Can we just take a break real quick and just come right back and do a...
and then we're gonna do part two, but we're gonna wind it down. Can, and just let's get okay. the technical stuff going on. Uh, Cause uh, I want everybody okay. to see okay. you good. Okay. <laughs> okay. I want them to see okay. the man and the mind behind all this fantastic music. We're still playing today on urban praise. Moody just everywhere on hallelujah. Oh, FM oh, just oh. everywhere. The man is Darius Brooks. <laughs> all right, y'all hold on. We'll be right back. We are urban praise. I'm Effie Roth. <laughs> 